Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So today we've got a fun topic here. Um, today we're gonna try to talk about how to get or paint uh, cool looking logos on your airsoft uh, G gas blowbacks or whatever your model, whether it could be an electric or an AEG or uh, really a Springer if you wanted to um, spend the time and money on something like that. Uh, today happens to be a gas blowback by WE that we're gonna talk about mostly. Um, Again, mainly it's just because it's predominantly pretty cheap and I don't mind, or relatively cheap, and I don't mind kind of splashing some paint on it and kind of experimenting with it a little bit at this point with this model. So um, what it really comes down to is oftentimes, as many of you folks who are airsofters out there know that when you get a new airsoft model, um, sometimes, you know, you get for what you pay for and some models like the Tokyo Marui, it would include like the nice trademarks, like the little pony and like the uh, like the logos and all that stuff, right? Um, some companies like Viper Tech will do the same thing, GNP. Um, in some cases, I think like with, like you pay for not only for the quality of the airsoft and gas blowback model, but you also pay for the logos and the trades that are put on there too. Um, with WE, however, you don't really get that. I mean, you commonly get that. I know some people have gotten it before and they, they're, it, there are ways to do it and it gets really complicated. But for me, uh, when I got my WE a couple years ago, I didn't have any trades. If you look back at these videos, right, you'll notice that they're just blank, um, just a blank thing, nothing on their receiver, which looks kind of plain, right? Now, don't get me wrong, because I think it's better to have nothing on it than then some garbage, you know, etch onto that. Um, but it would be nice and, um, but if you're, it's actually more nice now because now you can actually add on to it and draw stuff from your own for it. So if you remember back on my review I did uh, a couple months ago about the uh, alumina, Alumahide um, brown nail spray paint, and I was trying to see, well, what happens if I kind of like try to, you know, did like a uh, spray paint my own stuff on it? It could be whatever you want, right? It could be a picture of a, you know, um, an apple symbol or whatever, or it could be a picture of uh, your friend's receiver or something that they were, that you know you want to replicate. It doesn't really matter, right? Um, in that photo right there, right, I basically try to take a good old Play-Doh and try to like roll it onto um, the receiver of a GNP. Uh, a quick side note I want to mention before I go in further, the GNP model is one of those, I know I said earlier that you pay for the extra basically for these logos. That's not entirely true. Uh, like the Marui or the Viper Tech, you pay for really good quality stuff in addition to the logos. Well, GNP, uh, I don't know, in my experience so far, it's not great. You're really, I feel like I'm paying for just the logos at this point. Anyway. Um, you, uh, that's, that's a different t video though, but let's say your friend has a GMP or like you like what, you know, whatever logo you see laying around there. Um, at first you tried the Play-Doh method where you take the Play-Doh, uh, air dry clay, press it onto the, the, your airsoft receiver and try to get a good mold from it. Um, now you should, there's some ways, other ways you can do it where you might be able to peel it back and you won't be able to bend the mold, so to speak, and you'll be able to keep it straight, which is essential if you want to make this really work. I never really did that. I didn't want it to dry while it was still on my Airsoft model here. Um, and so it was always kind of, these molds were always kind of like curved, um, like kind of like bowed outwards. And so it makes it really hard to get a good imprint on it. And I did a couple of like smaller ones potentially. And so instead of doing the whole thing, maybe I did small chunks instead so that maybe I can like, it'll be uh, a little bit cleaner and more straight. But ultimately, if you remember in that video, it wasn't good, right? It was so blotchy. Like you would dip that into paint, <laughs> press it down. First one is completely covered. Like you can't even see anything. You press down again and eh, you know, that one's not so bad. The, the one uh, in the middle right there, but it's not consistent, right? And you mess up anytime you mess up and then like, you know, it's it's going to ruin your whole receiver, right? You, you've spent all this time painting it and now you gotta do it over again. So it's not a very practical thing where you're in some ways you're kind of relying on luck to get it. And ultimately I kind of got so frustrated, at it, you know, I just left it, you know, as it is right. You see in this photo here, which was the best that I ever was able to get it on the receiver. Yes, there were some photos that looked nice, you know, on the sheet of paper, 
um, but I was never able to capture, be lucky and capture that imprint onto the, the GBB model here, which is unfortunate. So this is just not practical and not a good way to do things. But then I found another way. And I, at first I was gonna try the same imprinting method, but with aluminum foil instead and kind of try to do the same stamp thing again. But then I was like, you know what? Why not just tape the aluminum foil to there? And, not, and when I say tape, I don't mean tape, I mean actually using paint. So what you basically can do is essentially take aluminum foil <laughs> Uh, so if your friend has a, you know, a receiver, one of the higher end receiver that you want to copy and if they're okay with it, right? Just say you can, you know, take some paint and, and it's not going to look great, but it's going to look better than nothing, basically, right? You're, no one's going to want to buy this. That's why it's, you know, um, it's, but it's kind of a fun thing to decorate your own and, like, you know, you have whatever you can put, you know, maybe your name on it even if you wanted to. But for this example here, we're just going to pick an example of a um, GMP model here. So you lay the aluminum layer on top of it like so, and then with your fingers, just gently kind of press down on it. So you kind of give it like a mold and like a general idea of where things are, where the engravings are located. Then what you do is you kind of, that once you got that preliminary coat going on, you take a, like a soft mechanical pencil like this, make sure the lead's fully retracted. You don't want the little graphite sticking out that's gonna poke a hole through the soft foil here. Um, and then you just kind of gently outline and trace out the um, the uh, the logos or whatever you're tracing here. And um, you actually don't even have to trace it. You can just kind of like move it side to side as if it was like a 3D printer going back and forth. And it will just capture whatever indents there will be into the uh, onto the foil like so. Um, I didn't do the whole thing just in this video and I couldn't capture it, but I only have, at least I got some still images, but that's how it looks like. Um, the top part right there, you can kind of see where the, the pen or the, the mechanical pencil was rolling over. And then the bottom part is where it, just like my, where it was just my fingers just pressing down on it. Remember the fingers is just to press down so you can get an, a vague outline so then it could help you trace it. But afterwards, it basically looks like this if you do the whole thing with a mechanical pencil and shave it on there, or uh, not shave it, but, um, uh, I guess so gently trace it, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Um, once you have what you think it looks kind of good, you know, and make sure it's a, it's not like a crumpled up piece of foil, you know, make sure you pick, pick a clean piece of foil, cut out that nice square. Um, and then what you do is you basically lay some paint on it. And again, it's the same aluminum hide product that we used before. Um, keep in mind that the aluminum hide product is very sticky as of any wet paint, but uh, this happened to be one that was very sticky that in my experience, I know works because this is what I use. But you kind of, you lay down a nice layer onto the receiver um, and then you put the little foil as if it was like a sticker gently on top of it, right? And then you coat the foil again with another layer of paint. Um, and then it would be basically let it dry. Now don't let it fool you. It looks like in the video I used a little bit more paint, and it looked like it was, it was drowning in it. But it, it, the bubble airs away, or the it airs away the bubbles a little bit, and it kind of looks the way it is now. So it's a lot better. So don't worry too much about it. I mean, unless you're putting like a dramatic amount of paint on it, that it's just going to completely mm. fill like the, the grooves and crevices. Yeah, maybe a little bit too much. To um, the bottom right it's there. not too bad of a of a method to do so. Um, so then the question was like, well, how does it hold up? You know, it looks, after it dries, it looks pretty nice, I think, actually. And so to this day, it looks like this. And granted, I don't like toss it around like a whole lot, right? I'm mostly, I, I don't play any, any airsoft games or anything like that. I know a lot of folks have like equipment on their body or the person. And so they kind of bumps it around a little bit. But by and large, this thing is actually pretty, um, it's not, that thick and so you're not denting the foil if you're tapping a little and certainly by using it like lightly use light use it's not going to scratch it up too badly actually so um basically this is one way if you want to start drawing stuff on your airsoft models that kind of whatever what you want to put on there um as long as you got a good imprint initially so whether you want to borrow your friend's um gbb model or whatever you know logo you're laying around or just again your name uh, maybe your phone number on it so in case you lose yours someone can call you and tell you where to go pick it up i don't know whatever you want um but this is like a cheap way of doing it instead of having to find someone who has like a CNC machine or whatever, or, uh, you know, to decorate it or whatever. And this is just like a nice paint project that I think is a pretty, uh, um, pretty nice actually. And it kind of, kind of solves the problem I had earlier. And I think it was kind of cool. So 
hopefully well, hopefully y'all found this kind of helpful and kind of cool and maybe that's something y'all be wanting to try uh, let me know if y'all had any better ideas actually and maybe another way to uh maybe a stencil technique that might be better um so we can try that instead all right see y'all next time